the Yakuza series is extremely popular in Japan. It has sold over 3 million copies and received high critical acclaim. This will be the third game to feature Japanese voices with English subtitles. Yakuza 3 was the first in the series to remove content for the sake of Western audiences. This caused a huge uproar on various sites from vocal fans of the series. Yakuza 4 hopes to right these wrongs while still delivering a compelling gameplay experience. The Yakuza titles shine in the freedom department. The world is literally your oyster in these games. Players will always have plenty to do in the form of entertaining themselves. The lineup of things to do is staggering. You can play pachinko, play at the batting cages, hit the arcades, bowl, go to the strip club, get a massage, take a date to the hot springs, and visit various host clubs. However, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to distractions in Yakuza 4. You'll spend a large majority of the game walking around Kamurocho, which is the digital depiction of Tokyo's own Kabukicho. Now, Kamurocho was more of a caricature of what you'd expect in Kabukicho, with players running into many wacky encounters. In all Yakuza games, just walking down the street promotes verbal and physical abuse, so much in fact that you probably want to beat the crap out of these guys in real life. Luckily, there are other things that could take your attention in Yakuza 4 mostly in the form of various sub-stories scattered about. This is where the characters show off their goodwill by helping as many citizens in distress as possible. This usually leads your character into some hilarious situations with anime-like denizens. This is what truly stands out for the entire Yakuza series. You'll probably have the most fun just running around solving these stories. The game constantly throws them in your face at every turn. It's easy to get distracted from the main storyline due to this. Just running around helping people can take up more than 25 hours alone. When you factor in the time wasted from various other activities, you'll realize how much the city has to offer. The graphics serve their purpose in certain areas and look terrible in others. The neon lit landscape and architecture really sells a Japanese city. The main characters themselves are all pretty detailed during cinematics. While running about on the streets, they take a bit of a hit, but nothing as bad as the civilians you associate with. A majority of them look bland and generic and clash when the main characters are nearby. It only further facilitates the issue with animations that are very robotic and recycled by many different characters. Like the small turn that characters use just before they walk off. It is something you'll notice every single time it happens. <laughs> The combat system needs a complete overhaul after four games. Sure, each of the characters has a different fighting style going for them, however, it's a lot less complicated than it sounds on paper. The gameplay is very similar to something you play in a Dynasty Warriors game. You smash on the square button a couple of times and throw a triangle in for a finisher. When your character gets enough spirit, he can use some dangerous finishers based on your opponent's positioning. The problem is that it's a little too simplistic for its own good. You do too much fighting in Yakuza 4 for the combat system to feel so stiff. Players will be surrounded by various enemies time after time. Unfortunately, the fighting system forces you to fight one person at a time. It still feels like the original PlayStation 2 games come to life on the PS3. It needs a big time advancement because it all starts to feel boring way too fast. The story in Yakuza 4 is a convoluted mess compared to the previous titles. In this iteration, you don't just play as our resident hero, Kazuma Kiryu. Instead, you're placed in the shoes of four different men along the course of the game. Akiyama, the moneylender, Saijima, the convict, Tanamira, the cop, and the former Yakuza turned savior, Kazuma Kiryu. Each of them has some stake around an evolving conspiracy regarding two Yakuza clans. A girl named Yasuko is in the middle of it all, and nearly every character has a reason to find her. Without trying to spoil the story too much, this girl isn't exactly a saint. She's somehow involved in a heavy conspiracy involving the Japanese Mafia. Each of the main characters is slowly drawn into the conspiracy over the course of the story. None of them are particularly good guys, and how they are squeezed into the mix isn't very cohesive. Yakuza 4 is the latest in the series, but it isn't the greatest. 
The story doesn't hook you like the previous titles, and the combat is stuck in the past. Of course, if you can deal with the repetitive combat, the sub-stories are fun, or you can just run around the city investing in all of the free roam activities. Yakuza 4 receives a C from Half-Ass Gaming. It's finally time for the series to do some serious upgrading. Yeah. Oh,